Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to walk you through more on my animation process and the thinking behind the techniques I use. I'll cover how to think about timings, layer structure, how you can animate with scripts instead of keyframes, and I'll also share a useful resource in the end along with the project source file. So follow along and let's get into it. So this is the animation flow that we are going to explore now and it's all about a conceptual experience around navigating in the forest using augmented reality. Very similar to concepts I've done in the past and this is similar where you scan your environment and you find different destinations. You select one, it goes down in the bottom and the cards are expanding, motion happening with content entering and exiting the screen and also having some uh, simulated step movement of the device itself. As you can see this presentation has a 3D device incorporated. I'm not going to cover that right now. I'm going to actually do another tutorial on that coming up soon but for now we're going to focus on the UI itself inside of the screen. Okay, so now we're in the project file and let's focus on the four first layers here. And this is around titling and how to transition one to another. Let's move the composition down to get some better focus. And uh, when we're scrubbing through this, we'll see what's happening. Where this starts with the first red layer being the first title fading out. At the same time, the next title and subtitle fading in. So if we take a closer look to this subtitle layer, we're going to see that in the position attribute, I've added a script that's telling this to basically delay it to the parent. So as you can see, both of these layers are linked to the green layer, which is controlling the position. And if we go in here and delete the script, we're going to see what's happening. Both of the titles comes in at the same time, which is fine, but it will add in that extra detail if we add this script back and make one appear right after the other one. So let's add this back and you can adjust this number in any way you want. And now when we play this back, we're gonna see a nice delay of the heading to the subtitle coming in right after the Fern Canyon title. I'll add this script in the description if you want to try it out yourself. And now let's continue with the next part of this flow. So this next part is about the cards, which is indicating locations you can be navigating to. So if we go into these two orange cards, this is basically the edge cards. And then we have a lot more happening to the main canyon card here. Let's scrub this back and we'll see that it starts in a square space with an icon and a title under it. It fades away along with the icon and the container itself increases in size and locks in the bottom. And when it lands in the bottom, it makes the last increase in size to allow the content itself to fade in in a similar motion. So now let's move down and uh, go into the details of how this card is getting that blur effect in the background. It's actually built up by two identical shape layers, which has the same keyframes, but one of them acts as a mask and the other one as a white overlay. Now, if we go down to the card blur layer, and we disable the alpha matte masking, we now see this is a full screen adjustments layer with blur effect on it. And then let's remove one at a time here and see what's happening. So without this masking, it's just gonna be a white box. We do alpha matte masking and you see it's starting to be blur in there. And then we also move it around and you see it's masking. And then we wanna add the white overlay to get some contrast. And that's the effect we get in the end. And then we animate this as said before in the exact same keyframes. Now I actually move the layer around so let's go right click transform and then fit this back to the comp size. And now to the final detail and that is the content inside of this container. So that's a pre-composition. You can say it works in the same way as a Photoshop smart object which also has some content so you don't need to have everything in the same place. So the three first layers under the green one is the left content, the title, subtitle and the icon. And the last one is the X icon on the right. These uses the same technique as before where I parent these to the position layer in the top. And then the opacity is the only thing I need to animate on the individual layers. And then since the X icon on the right is uh, alone, 
you just have all the position and opacity keyframes on that one. So now if we go into these layers, we're going to see that we use the same script we used before to delay the motion from the parent. And you can adjust these numbers in any way you want. But one thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to have too much things going on at the same time. It's going to be distracting and that is not the goal with animation. It should add value. And in this case, it shows that it's separate elements, even though they're in the same component. But if they appear all of them in different ways, it's going to be a lot of stuff happening at the same time. So in this case, I'm just going to use the same value on both to come in together rather than separate. Now we're in the last part of this flow and this is going to be all about the background and how I made it look like it's a walking. So I'm scrolling down to the bottom layers here and it consists of an uh, overlay in the top and bottom as you can see. It gives a nice contrast to the content above and in the bottom we have the actual background composition. So as you can see we have a lot of keyframes in the bottom here representing each of the up and down step. And in the top I have markers in the actual composition which helps me understand when these happens and by holding in shift and any number you can replace them at any position and when you render out this video you will actually have these markers on that video and as you can see in the final presentation video I made then it's easier to say organized in general but especially if you want to time other things to this specific motion. So now if I go down and select all these position keyframes and bring up the curve editor we now going to see how this motion looks like in curves. And as you can see, it's just like in reality, we have hard hits against the ground and then we have smaller ones when you do the next step. And that's how it repeats. And the keyframes here in general is the same. It's just copied across a longer period of time. Now we go back to the main composition and we want to inspect what's happening inside of this background. So this one consists of two layers, one in the top, which is the colored trail, and in the bottom we have the forest photo. When moving around, you can see this is the shape of the trail, and I have a blending mode to color to make it bleed better into the background. But here you can see how it looks like in normal blending mode with gaps between the trees. Now I'm just adding back the color blending mode. And then the next step after this was to animate this so it looks like it's pulsating and showing you which way you need to go. And the easy way to do this is to add in a mask on this layer and I move the mask instead of doing anything to the actual trail. So as you can see it's a section of keyframes that is duplicated across a longer period of time similar to the steps and then it goes back and forth. Now this was the entire walkthrough of this flow, but why not do as I did last time and uh, throw in some extra stuff in the end here. And this time it's a thing that many of you requested and that's how you make this tap indicator element. So it's basically very easy. It's consisting of one shape only, which is a circle. And here you can see in the keyframes, it's uh, increasing in size and the width of the stroke. And if we play this in slow motion, we see the circle being large going down in size and then increases in the end. And same goes for the stroke width. It starts thin, going thicker until impact, and then it goes back thin again. And if we select all the keyframes, we can check out in the curve editor that we have a really smooth curve here. Even though we have our impactful hit in the middle, it follows through with smooth motion. So now we have a reusable tap indicator composition that you can place above any of your UI animation and interactions. So there we go, another session has come to an end. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments what you think about it and what you want to see next. Follow me on Instagram or any other social media channel at Velgroff. Subscribe for more and I'll see you very soon again.